A cafeteria worker lost her job for giving a meal to a hungry child. When the news spread, the school's efforts to placate angry parents backfired, intensifying their outrage. Bonnie Kimball worked in the Muscoma Valley Regional High School lunchroom in Canada, New Hampshire for four and a half years before being fired for the way she treated a hungry student. Bonnie thought she was doing the right thing, but her employer, Cafe Services, disagreed, giving her the boot after seeing how she handled the difficult situation. We know these kids, Bonnie said, referring to the small high school student population as well as their circumstances. So when a student came through the line with his tray but no way to pay, she quietly told him to have his mom deposit money in his account. With Cafe Services' contract up for renewal, a manager for the food vendor was observing operations at the school. The student paid his tab the following day, but that didn't matter to Bonnie Kimball's boss. She was fired later, leaving her in disbelief as she said she was simply following directions. We weren't supposed to pull trays, Bonnie said, explaining that her direct manager instructed staff to let students take food and discreetly remind them to have money added to their account. Since the Abbey Group was going against cafe services in a bid for the district's food services contract, which was worth more than $560 thousand in revenue, Bonnie's manager didn't want any scenes with students who didn't have money for lunch. I was doing what I was told to do, Bonnie explained, admitting that she allowed the student to take $8 worth of a la carte food without paying. School board chairman Cookie Hebert sent us the school's policy to feed students and cafe services responsibility to ensure it's followed. There's no refusal, Hebert said, explaining that students get lunch even if they can't pay. However, it was Hebert's understanding that students without money are given the lunch of the day and prohibited from getting a la carte menu items. But two other employees in the Muscoma lunchroom quit after Bonnie Kimball's termination because, according to Bonnie, they knew she was following the manager's instructions and wanted to protest her treatment, reassuring parents that the staff resignations didn't negatively impact the school. Hebert said, there's been no hiccups in the service to the district, but that did little to reassure an angry public as a media firestorm erupted, especially since Cafe Services was awarded the food vendor contract for another year. In a statement, Cafe Services denied that it would sack anyone over an $8 lunch debt. Human Resources Director Jay Matheson said the company wouldn't authorize an employee to not feed a student or staff member a meal. He'd also asserted that the student is provided a meal when they do not have funds. In Bonnie Kimball's termination letter, however, Matheson wrote that a student came through the line with multiple food items that Bonnie did not charge him for and said that it was a strict violation of their cash handling procedures. The school's charge policy and federal regulations governing free meals were at the center of the issue. In other words, she was indeed fired for feeding the student. Months after Bonnie was fired, the Muscoma Valley Regional School District was still scrambling to end the negative publicity. Superintendent Amanda Isabel told Fresh Picks Cafe, a division of Cafe Services Incorporated, to give the employee back her job along with back pay or face losing the contract worth $560 thousand. The vendor agreed to rehire Bonnie, even though President Brian Stone said the manager felt the termination was appropriate. In consultation with the school district, we're going to offer to rehire our recently terminated employee and provide her back pay and we will work with the school district to revise policies and procedures regarding transactions. We will then work with our manager on those policies, Stone said in a statement. But Bonnie Kimball isn't interested in the offer, believing the district only lent her support due to bad press. They all just want me to get the press off their back, she said after reading the district's statement. It's hard to disagree with her assumption. The events of these past few weeks and the feedback I have received from parents have given me considerable pause Superintendent Amanda Isabel said, As a school district, we understand the importance of rules and procedures, but upon reflection, I've become sufficiently convinced that it is wrong of us to assume that all the responsibility falls to the vendor, and I do not believe our communities would accept that explanation of this situation. It's not clear what will happen to Cafe Services' contract if Bonnie Kimball refuses to return to her job. Bonnie isn't sympathetic to their plight. They did this to themselves, she said. Since the food vendor and the district both agreed that hungry children who couldn't pay should be fed without a scene, it seems she's right. The district's policy regarding free lunches is that students will always be provided with meals, including milk, fruits, and vegetables, Isabel said. There are, however, items such as ice cream bars, sports drinks, and chips that are not provided for free. 
Restricting free items is understandable. But this child wasn't getting a free lunch, he was just told to pay later. Making him exchange his items would have drawn unnecessary attention, causing a scene Bonnie Kimball was instructed to avoid. While policies are clear-cut, real-life situations often aren't. We know these kids, Bonnie said, showing she knew what was best in this situation. The child was fed, and the bill was paid. That should have been the end of it.